So, for some time now, Lily Pete has said as part of her master plan, she's going to go through my videos and get my content that's been up for a year now. I thought at first to laugh it off and deal with it as it happens. I recently talked to Not a Poker Chip Napsy, who is even more Tumblr in his words than Lily Pete, to the left of Lily, who just agreed with her and said, You're going down because Lily Pete says so. He's a feminist worshipping communist, and he'll answer to that. Instead of just hoping things will be better, and doing nothing, I have had all my How Not to Brody archived on VidMe. Down below will be my DeviantArt, which I suggest following because, unlike Twitter, if you keep up with my journal, you'll be able to find my latest content, with no fuss or muss. There's my Twitter, but I will warn you, I piss off even my closest friends on there on a regular basis, and I am complete garbage on Twitter. Shout out to Harmful Opinions, I don't believe that you being removed from Twitter makes any sense, I'm infinitely far worse than you ever were on there. Uh, we'll include a link in the description to his video and his unfair removal. There's my Minds account, love that site, but the only ones that you'll really need to follow will be DeviantArt or VidMe. Assuming nothing happens, please go to Fan and Frenzy. It will have episodes 47 and 48. If this is the end of my YouTube adventure, I have had a lot of fun. I don't have any regrets. I did help a lot of people, and I'm never going to tell you I was a saint. Maybe it's a prank, maybe it's a fake out, I'm gullible and I always like dealing with worst case scenarios. What's that? Oh, the video's out. 23 minutes. That's two glass of waters in five days. I guess I should be honored. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Well, that's five glass of waters I'm behind on. So, bug spray, good watch. This is a tweet from Vita. Half of the conclusions were good, but there's so much guesswork. Well, that comes from isolation. Also, no one is shocked that you went for Foxwell. I will give you the respect that you definitely brought it this time. You didn't sacrifice entertainment at all. Next week on Fan and Frenzy, we'll get to it. So that was it, huh? Well, I could get used to that. I want to make a note here and hijack my own show and give my thoughts on MLP if I am. Fame and misfortune and a couple of my peers have felt a disconnect on what you would call, on what you would argue is a brilliant ending. The episode ends on a note that everything is broken, and it's not going to be fixed. First, why it's brilliant. Fame and Misfortune has the potential to be the ultimate middle finger to the show in general. The show damn near started on friendship letters that became personal stories to the main characters themselves, whether it be Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Twilight Sparkle, or Fluttershy. That that those stories are there to teach lessons to the audience, and this episode answers that age-old question, what if we got to see what happened if these lessons got out? Nobody, or next to nobody, learned a damn thing. The whole show has literally been for no good reason. Based on that, you'd think I'd be doing a backflip. After the big song at the end of the episode, we see the audience doesn't buy it, and Twilight and her friends rush back into the castle, nothing is fixed, and the moral I'm taking away from this is, once the cat's out of the bag, there is no going back. Once you open a door like that to everyone, for better or for worse, right or wrong, you have to live with the outcome. People now know the real you. If you're thinking of opening yourself up unnecessarily and assuming that people will be warm and understanding, Nido and Mosquito, you might want to think again. My biggest critique for episodes like Canterlot Boutique is why it's admirable to respect that Rarity stood behind her convictions. That's right, the message to send to kids, help people in general. Taking the right choice comes with a cost. Rarity and Canterlot Boutique got to win. Arguably, she was better off for doing the right thing. There is no way that the main six should have been able to explain this in 22 minutes and have everything be fine in Fame and Misfortune. Hell, you could have a season arc for season 8 if you wanted to make this more believable, which would have been a lot more work, but there is a super easy move that takes no effort to fix this episode. If Fame and Misfortune was the last damn episode, think about that. Everything you learned and you can find out, it was all for nothing and then the show ends for everyone and the only thing that Twilight and company have to show for it is friendship. It's win-win. You don't have to worry about the continuity and having the whole town. Well, forget that. The whole of Equestria harping in future episodes about the main six's flaws. Honestly, when the show does end, if you don't like that episode, you can always pretend like this was it. I mean, besides all that, it's kind of a shame that they have a golden opportunity for Starlight to have to deal with some of the backlash from enslaving a town, and they drop the ball. But yeah, as a self-contained episode, I rather liked it. This might be my last video on MLP if I am. 
so I just thought I'd share. Speaking of sharing, this is Lord Zarkon. Hello, everyone. It's me, Lord Zarkon. And um, you're probably wondering why I'm doing this. For context, for people who want to know Lord Zarkon was some dude Limbo came across nearly three years ago. Let's say two. We bumped into him in 2015 without incident, minus some minor flub that he pulled at the Horseshoe Crew panel, something about a peace treaty between Limbo, the Rift, and the Horseshoe Crew, but by and large, small potatoes. Now, fast forward to 2016. We have some footage. This is Zarkon in the back here. This is a Finjar, straight from BronyCon, here with Kitchi FIM, Molly, Kitty, or whatever the hell her damn name is. Hi, I'm a bitch. It's, it's your bitch. Get her yes, that's what, what's your name? Dusty Zirik Rustic, Rustic, <laughs> Rustic, <laughs> Rustic, <laughs> Rustic Shine. So good. My absolute favorite. <laughs> um, some dude so with a cowboy good. hat in the background. Lord Zarkon. Uh, this is Iris John. I guess I'll have to put a, a smiley face over his face. Yes. And a bunch of other people in the audience that don't really matter. Uh, not a big deal. Everything's fine. I honestly can't tell you if at this time we had heat with the guy or not. Even my memory fades. It's why I do these videos. Well, apparently I just found out something when I came back from BrodyCon. As it turns out, I just realized that several people who thought they were cool, who thought they were nice, I'm not going to list names, it turns out they all hate me. The problem with Zarkon's story about finding out that people hated him, if we go back to How Not to Brony 25, which Zarkon's comment is down below, I talked about how Zarkon invited himself into Toon Critic's room at NYC PonyCon. You're free to check that out. Toon Critic read off to a room of 12 people, which included Pastel Pros, Toon Critic, I Know Hisenshi, Dulcet Tones, Quill Stroke, Drake Vagabond, Josh Scorcher's editor, Dr. Fowl, Death Alchemist, Twist of Fate, Riley Miller, last and not least, myself as well as Kichi FIM. Knowing this was said and based on your YouTube comment, it's rather hard to say you were surprised that you had endeared yourself to Toon Critic and Voice Reason at a previous con in such a form and fashion if they were going to be around you that you needed to be at your super duper bestest behavior. You were not. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I've am i pissed off Toon and Voice and I apologize for that. I I've chose to side with the wrong people and get up on, you guessed it, my moral high horse for literally no good reason. I'm not going to go into details, but they just do. So, I want to make it perfectly clear that I'm apparently not welcome anymore. And this isn't going to turn into an attack video or a blame video, I guess a lot of it is kind of my fault. So... So, um, at the convention I met several people and they were all a lot more chill than I thought they were. They were much better in person than they were online. Uh, again, I'm not going to list names because I don't want this to turn into a personal attack video. Because that seems to be all they do now these days is attack people. To all those who I may or may not have pissed off, yes, I'm even going to those. I just want to let you know that I am... I'm leaving. It's true, we're a lot more chill than we usually are online. Wolfkeen is still pretty loud even in small doses. Just breaking your balls. Just a skosh. As for the your fault, when I talked to you aside, there were a couple things that you could have done. You could have double checked with anyone else, everyone else, if I was blowing smoke up your ass about making people uncomfortable. You decided not to. Like, if you don't want to believe me, that's fine. You could have turned to Keyframe, A and Y, and of Dreams, Stardust, or anyone else that was there and said, hey, am I being too much? Two. If I'm being too much, what can I do to bring it down a notch? I bring this up because this isn't just advice to Zarkon, it's advice to anyone and everyone. And I do mean anyone. I'm sure I was too much at times at Khan. Especially with Kichi FIM. She's very sensitive, delicate, gentle, majestic. And I'm a bit oafish. It's true, this is a fact. I'm sure I should have asked, am I being too much? I think it's something we can all ask from time to time with our friends. Now and again, it can help sidestep misunderstandings. You notice this show has this theme of corrections. How not to Bernie, I mean. And a chance at self-improvement to help people's mistakes. Is it a wonder 
the people who make the most mistakes and want to learn the least want this show gone. Sirs, I just want to let you know that I am, I'm leaving. I'm never coming back. Because it's clearly obvious you don't want me. And you know what? I'll respect that. You can expect me not to appear anymore and come to think of it, I don't even know if I'll go to a brony convention ever again, honestly. If I'm going to be met with so much resentment, whether it be inside or outside, I'm not really going to feel very welcome at all. You act as if people saw you and spat, that you walked into a room and it parted like the Red Sea. You did, in fact, crowd around people who expressed that they wanted space, gently moved back, then moved back in. No one did this. No one treated you that poorly. Anyone can make a bad first impression, or two or three, if you're around a group of people. It's very important to make sure that you're around your immediate friends. If you don't know how to act, look, stealing into Toon's room was a dick move, but it's a survival technique. You didn't have anywhere to go. You did what you had to do. Fine. You flubbed a little bit at the horseshoe pen. All right, you know what? It's for reasons like those that I don't go up on the mic and ask questions at cons. When I ran into Cell Specs 2016, I froze, and I think I said hi, I didn't say much else, and I was scared to talk to her. We all fuck up. I'm a fan of her work, she's come on my podcast, and I'm aware, I'm unaware of any ill will, and I just flubbed a chance to say hi. On the other hand, there are other people I don't get along with. I can think of two who I was within five feet of, that I didn't want to see. On Sunday night, I split away from the group, half because I was tired as hell, and half because I didn't want to bump heads with Mad Munchkin. I went back to my hotel, and after getting lost, and going to the wrong hotel, I talked to Pass Analysis via Skype. That worked because I talked with someone I was just more comfortable talking with, and I knew at that moment wanted to talk to me. That's changed, but, you know, what can you do? So, again, I'm not angry at any of you. I'm kind of more annoyed, more so at myself than I am at anyone else because it just proves how unlikable of a person I am and I guess I'm just designed to be the person that nobody wants to be around. Now, the reason why I'm kind of saying this right now is because this isn't just something that's brand new in my life. This is something that's been happening throughout almost almost my entire life, really. So again, you weren't mad plushy. I didn't instantly talk to you and feel revulsion. Part of BC is going, hi, how are you doing? And sometimes moving on. In 2015, I got to do that much with Jeff Burgess. Jeff is a cool guy. I wanted to hang out. But then I ran out of things to say. In 2017, I would have liked to have hung out with Event Horizon. I never saw him till his panel. I knew he hated my girlfriend's guts. So basically, when you know who won the pony for my time. I'm not saying I would get along with Event. Probably not. I think deep down inside, I have precious little in common with Event Horizon. I'd love to fix that, but you can't make people hang out with you. I could try buttering him up and rattling his cage, pushing and pulling on all the carrot stick tactics in the world but he just doesn't want to be boys. What would have been comfortable if I stuck around him, hoping that he was too polite to tell me to go away. Really? This has happened in high school, middle school, and even in college. I'm always the guy that nobody wants to be around, and it just feels like I'm designed to just be on my own. Because no matter what I do, no matter what I try. Everyone just wants me to piss off. And, um, I'm not, and, um, I guess when I got into this, well, not really got into, but like, um, met up with a lot of the people in the real analysis community, regardless of how quote unquote horse famous they are, I felt like, again, this was like a new beginning, but it just turned out to be the same thing as all those other groups back in middle school and high school. So let me ask you this again. You have a problem. 
You're conceding this is your problem in this video, despite me wanting to vomit in my mouth whenever I hear love and tolerate. If you look hard enough, if you try hard enough, you can either find or make a place of your own in the fandom, no matter how flawed it is. Chris Chan, to the best of my knowledge, went to BC this year, and other than being there, he went off without incident. Don't quote me on that, I'd go double check with Mindless Gonzo on that one. It was a low-key, drama-free con, and when I referred to you, drama-wise, I gave that drama a 2 out of 10. Rarifag from Horse News got a 3 out of 10 for kissing Delth Alchemist Sand back in BronyCon 2016. Neither of these things are massive deal breakers. Corporal and Brony literally sat a table away from the limbo dinner, and I was more amused than anything else. What you would need to do in either this fandom or the next one is, hi, sorry about last time, and then wander off. Make some friends before con. Stick with those friends. Learn to mingle. To socially float in and out between groups. And not latch on too hard. Try to read people's reactions. And failing that, ask if you're being too much. I'm just not wanting anymore. And at this point, I just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to bother with this anymore. I'm not going to try to push my way in because... It only leads to more trouble. I'm leaving, and I'm never coming back. And to all of you who are angry at me, I'm sorry I acted the way I did, and... I'm... I don't want to be an anchor to any of you anymore. Because I'm just tired of it all. Because all it does is just lead to more drama, and... That's something we definitely don't need anymore. So, goodbye. Now, I'm not going to lie, I don't have super amazing memories of Zarkon. I was prepared for worse and barely got a fraction of what I was prepared for, but that's me personally. If Zarkon was or is the worst thing at BronyCon every year, I mean, I mean, it's not like Corpulent Brony hiring Harp, that's the horse anal rape podcast, to steal Toon Critic's hat, so he could have a story for horse news. This happened. It happened because Corpulent was following Harp around and its tunes panel. And then he made an article about it. Like Zarkon, if you tried to be that bad, you couldn't. Don't take that as a challenge. There's not much you'd have to change to be tolerable. And normally, we know how I end these shows. So just in case, this is the last one. My Vidme will be down below. If you make or have an account, follow me or bookmark the channel. If you don't, if you're looking for How Not to Brony, the last couple of episodes are in, are in Fan and Frenzy or How Not to Brony's playlist on this channel. I suggest subscribing to Fan and Frenzy at the very least. If that goes down, go to VidMe. YouTube has increasingly made things more difficult from YouTube's heroes to the Where's the Fair Use movement, the limited access, the massive demonetization which, oddly enough, hasn't hit me, knock on wood, I really suggest to my audience, get a VidMe account. Not necessarily for me. You'll start to see people you like floating their way over there. It's a good idea, if nothing else, to back up your content. It's small, but a growing platform. As for strikes and removals of content, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm sure it does, but it's not the migraine that YouTube's been. Give it a look for your favorite YouTubers, as well as myself. Good night and good luck. Don't ask why a field burns or a plague spreads. All for no good reason.